Ronald Arbuthnot Knox, the 17th of February 1888 to the 24th of August 1957, was an English Catholic priest, theologian, and author of detective stories. He was also a writer and a regular broadcaster for BBC Radio. Topic: Early life and education. Ronald Knox was born into an Anglican family in Kibworth, Leicestershire, England. His strongly evangelical father was Edmund Arbuthnot Knox, who later became the Bishop of Manchester, and was a descendant of John Arbuthnot, 8th Viscount of Arbuthnot. The young Knox was educated at Eton House and Eton College, where he took the first scholarship in 1900 and Balliol College, Oxford, where again he won the first Classics scholarship in 1905. Knox, a brilliant classicist, won the Craven, the Hertford and the Ireland scholarships in classics, as well as the Geisford Prize for Greek verse composition in 1908 and the Chancellor's Prize for Latin verse composition in 1910. Aged 17, he privately vowed to remain celibate. In 1910, he became a Fellow of Trinity College, Oxford. Interested in Anglo-Catholicism, he became a key member of Maurice Child's fashionable set. He would not begin tutorials until 1911 and so accepted the job of classics tutor to the brother of a friend at Eton, to Harold Macmillan, who would be called C. Both in Knox's Spiritual Aeneid and in Evelyn Waugh's biography of Knox, in the sabbatical, although he was later dismissed by Nellie Macmillan for being a high church Anglican. Topic: <laughs> Church of England. Knox was ordained an Anglican priest in 1912 and was appointed chaplain of Trinity College. During World War I, he served in military intelligence. In 1915, Cyril Allington, who had been master in college at Eton during Knox's time there, and was now the headmaster of Shrewsbury School, invited Knox to join the teaching staff at Shrewsbury to fill in for a former colleger at Eton, his friend Evelyn Southwell, who had joined the British Army. Knox was long remembered at Shrewsbury as the highly dedicated and entertaining form master of V.B. <inaudible> Roman Catholic Church Knox resigned as Anglican chaplain in 1917 when he became a Roman Catholic. In response to Knox's conversion to Roman Catholicism, his father cut him out of his will. In 1918 Knox was ordained a Roman Catholic priest and in 1919 joined the staff of St. Edmund's College, Ware, Hertfordshire, remaining there until 1926. He explained his spiritual journey in two privately printed books, Apologia 1917 and A Spiritual Aeneid 1918. Knox's conversion to the Catholic faith was influenced in part by the English writer G. K. Chesterton, before Chesterton himself became Catholic. When Chesterton was received into the Roman Catholic Church in 1922, he in turn was influenced by Knox. Knox wrote and broadcast on Christianity and other subjects. While Roman Catholic chaplain at the University of Oxford 1926 to 1939, and after his elevation to a Monsignor in 1936, he wrote classic detective stories. In 1929, he codified the rules for detective stories into a Decalogue of 10 commandments. He was one of the founding members of the Detection Club and wrote several works of detective fiction, including five novels and a short story featuring Miles Breeden, who is employed as a private investigator by the Indescribable Insurance Company. Directed by his religious superiors, he retranslated the Latin Vulgate Bible into English, using Hebrew and Greek sources, beginning in 1936. His works on religious themes include, Some Loose Stones 1913, Reunion All Round 1914, A Spiritual Aeneid 1918, The Belief of Catholics 1927, Caliban in Grub Street 1930, Heaven and Charing Cross 1935, Let Dawn's Delight 1939, and Captive Flames 1940. When G.K. Chesterton died in 1936. Knox delivered a panegyric for his Requiem Mass in Westminster Cathedral, an essay in Knox's Essays in Satire, 1928. Studies in the Literature of Sherlock Holmes was the first of the genre of mock serious critical writings on Sherlock Holmes and mock historical studies in which the existence of Holmes, Watson, et al. is assumed. Another of these essays, The Authorship of In Memoriam purports to prove that Tennyson's poem was actually written by Queen Victoria. Another satirical essay, Reunion All Round, 
mocked the fabled Anglican tolerance in the form of an appeal to the Anglican Church to absorb everyone from Muslims to atheists, and even Catholics after murdering Irish children and banning Irish marriage and reproduction. In 1953 Knox visited the Oxfords in Zanzibar and the Actons in Rhodesia. It was on this trip that he began his translation of The Imitation of Christ and, upon his return to Mels, his translation of Thérèse of Lisieux's autobiography of a saint. He also began a work of apologetics intended to reach a wider audience than the student one of his The Belief of Catholics 1927. But all his activities were curtailed by his sudden and serious illness early in 1957. At the invitation of his old friend, Harold Macmillan, he stayed at 10 Downing Street while in London to consult a specialist. The doctor confirmed the diagnosis of incurable cancer. He died on 24 August 1957, and his body was brought to Westminster Cathedral. Bishop Craven celebrated the Requiem Mass, at which Father Martin Darcy, a Jesuit, preached the panegyric. Knox was buried in the churchyard of St. Andrew's Church, Mells. The first biography of Knox, entitled The Life of Ronald Knox, was the work of his friend and literary executor, Evelyn Waugh, and appeared two years after his death. Waugh, a devout Catholic and fervent admirer of Knox's works, had obtained his friend's permission for the task. In 1977 Knox's niece, Penelope Fitzgerald, published a composite biography, The Knox Brothers, which devoted equal weight to him and his three brothers e. V. Knox, the editor of the humorous magazine Punch, Dilwyn Knox, classical scholar and cryptanalyst, and Wilfred Knox, an Anglican monk and New Testament scholar. The Wine of Certitude, a literary biography of Ronald Knox by David Rooney was published in 2009. This followed two recent studies, Ronald Knox's Apologist, Wit, Laughter and the Popish Creed 2007, and Second Friends, C.S. Lewis and Ronald Knox in Conversation 2008, both by Milton Walsh. A more recent biography setting Knox in the cultural context of his times is Terry Tastard, Ronald Knox and English Catholicism 2009. Topic. Radio hoax In January 1926, for one of his regular BBC radio programmes, Knox broadcast a simulated live report of revolution sweeping across London, entitled Broadcasting from the Barricades. In addition, to live reports of several people, including a government minister, being lynched, his broadcast mixed supposed banned music from the Savoy Hotel with the hotel's purported destruction by trench mortars. The Houses of Parliament and the Clock Tower were also said to have been flattened. Because the broadcast occurred on a snowy weekend, much of the United Kingdom was unable to get the newspapers until days later. The lack of newspapers caused a minor panic, as it was believed that the events in London caused this. Four months later there was considerable public disorder during the general strike, so the possibility of a revolution had been realistic at the time. A 2005 BBC report on the broadcast suggests that the innovative style of Knox's program may have influenced Orson Welles's radio broadcast, The War of the Worlds, 1938, which it foreshadowed in its consequences. In an interview for the book This is Orson Welles, Welles himself said that the broadcast gave him the idea for The War of the Worlds. The script of the broadcast is reprinted in Essays in Satire 1928 as A Forgotten Interlude. Topic. Publications Topic. Selected works Knox Bible, a translation of the Latin Vulgate Some Loose Stones, being a consideration of certain tendencies in modern theology illustrated by reference to the book called Foundations, 1913 Absolute and Abitiful, 1913 a satire in the manner of Dryden on the latitudinarianism of the authors of Foundations including William Temple, later Archbishop of Canterbury. The Church in Bondage 1914. Sermons Reunion All Round 1914. A satire on the readiness of certain Anglicans to sink doctrinal differences with the nonconformist sects in the interests of Christian good fellowship. Bread or Stone 1915. Four addresses on impetrative or petitionary prayer. A Spiritual Aeneid, Being an Account of a Journey to the Catholic Faith 1918. Patrick Shaw Stewart 1920. Biography of Knox's friend and fellow Etonian, Patrick Shaw Stewart, who died on active service in the First World War. 
Memories of the Future, being memories of the years 1915–1972, written in the Year of Grace 1988 by Opal, Lady Porshock 1923. Combines a parody of the current autobiographies of women of fashion with a gentle satire on current whims. Educational, medical, political and theological. Sanctions, a frivolity 1924. An elegant and despite its subtitle, not particularly frivolous fiction in the manner of W. H. Malik's The New Republic, in which the guests at a country house party find all their conversations turning towards the question, what are the ultimate sanctions, social, intellectual, supernatural, which determine man's behavior and destiny? Other Eyes Than Ours 1926. A satirical tale about a hoax played on a circle of spiritualists. An Open Air Pulpit 1926. Essays. The Belief of Catholics 1927. His survey of Catholic belief, considered a classic of apologetics and a Catholic equivalent to C.S. Lewis' Mere Christianity. Essays in Satire 1928. Contains the best of his Anglican humorous writings, with some subsequent literary essays. The Mystery of the Kingdom and Other Sermons 1928. The Church on Earth 1929. On Getting There 1929. Essays. Caliban in Grub Street 1930. A satire on the religious opinions of some of the chief popular writers of the day including Arnold Bennett and Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. Broadcast Minds 1932. A criticism of the religious opinions of some of the leading scientific publicists of the time including Julian Huxley and Bertrand Russell. Difficulties, being a correspondence about the Catholic religion, with Arnold Lunn 1932. An exchange of letters with Lunn, then a curious but skeptical Protestant, about the Catholic Church. Lunn later converted. Heaven and Charing Cross, Sermons on the Holy Eucharist 1935. Barchester Pilgrimage 1935. A sequel to the Chronicles of Barsetshire written in the style of Trollope. It follows the fortunes of the children and grandchildren of Trollope's characters up to the time of writing, with some gentle satire on the social, political and religious changes of the 20th century. It was reprinted in 1990 by the Trollope Society. Let Dawn's Delight 1939. One of Knox's most famous works, though currently out of print, taking as its subject the history of Oxford from the Reformation to shortly before World War II, it traces the disintegration of a common culture though the conversations of the dons of Simon Magus, a fictional college, first in 1588, and then by fifty-year intervals until 1938. Captive Flames, a collection of panegyrics 1940. 21 homilies on some of Knox's favorite saints, including Saint Cecilia, Saint Dominic, Saint Joan of Arc and Saint Ignatius of Loyola. In Soft Garments 1942. Addresses to Oxford Students on Faith in the Modern World. God and the Atom 1945. An ethical and philosophical analysis of the shock of the atomic bomb, its use against Hiroshima and Nagasaki and the moral questions arising therefrom. The Mass in Slow Motion 1948. A book of talks for schoolgirls which, with its two successors, became the most popular of all Knox's writings. The Creed in Slow Motion 1949. The second book of his talks for schoolgirls. On Englishing the Bible 1949. Book of eight essays about retranslating the Bible from the Latin Vulgate, with Hebrew, Greek sources. The Gospel in Slow Motion 1950. The final book of his talks for schoolgirls. St. Paul's Gospel 1950. A series of Lenten sermons preached that year by Knox in Westminster Cathedral. Enthusiasm, a chapter in the history of religion with special reference to the 17 and 18 centuries 1950. Knox's own favorite book, a study of the various movements of Christian men and women who have tried to live a less worldly life than other Christians, claiming the direct guidance of the Holy Spirit, and eventually splitting off into separate sects. Quietism and Jansenism seem to be the primary foci. Stimuli 1951. A selection of his monthly contributions to the Sunday Times. The Hidden Stream, Mysteries of the Christian Faith 1952. Addresses to Oxford students in which Knox evaluates fundamental dogmas and stumbling blocks of Catholicism. Off the Record 1953. A selection of 51 letters addressed to individual inquirers on religious topics of general interest. The Window in the Wall and Other Sermons on the Holy Eucharist 1956. 
Bridegroom and Bride 1957. Wedding Addresses Topic. Detective fiction Topic. Novels The Viaduct Murder 1925. The Three Taps 1927 features Miles Breeden. The Footsteps at the Lock 1928 features Miles Breeden. The Body in the Silo 1933 features Miles Breeden. Still Dead 1934 features Miles Breeden. Double Cross Purposes 1937 features Miles Breeden. Topic: Short Stories. Solved by Inspection 1931 features Miles Breeden. The Motive 1937. The Adventure of the First Class Carriage 1947. Topic. Collaborative works by the Detection Club Behind the Screen 1930, six contributors including Knox The Floating Admiral 1931, 14 contributors including Knox Six Against the Yard 1936, six contributors including Knox Topic. See also Golden Age of Detective Fiction Topic. References Topic. Sources Corbishley, Thomas, Spiite, Robert. Ronald Knox, The Priest the Writer 1965, online free Dunn, Hugo R. Athematization and Analysis of the Spirituality in the Writings of Ronald A. Knox, 1888–1957, STD Dissertation, Studies in Sacred Theology, 2nd Series, No. 284, Catholic University of America, 1981. Marshall, George. Two Autobiographical Narratives of Conversion, Robert Hugh Benson and Ronald Knox. British Catholic History 24.2 1998 237-253 Rooney, David M. The Wine of Certitude, a Literary Biography of Ronald Knox, San Francisco, Ignatius Press, 2009. Tastard, Terry. Ronald Knox and English Catholicism, Leominster, Gracewing, 2009. Topic: External links. Petrie Luconin, Ronald Knox, Books and Writers, Works by Ronald Knox at Faded Page, Canada, Works by Ronald Knox at Open Library, The Ronald Knox Society of North America, BBC Radio 4, The Riot That Never Was, Report on Knox's Radio Hoax, John Gosling's War of the World's Invasion: The Historical Perspective. Broadcasting the Barricades 1926 Part 1 Article about Knox's radio hoax National Portrait Gallery Ronald Arbuthnot Knox Various Portraits The Internet Bible Catalog Ronald A Knox His Translations of the New Testament and Old Testament Bible Gateway Knox Bible The Complete Knox Bible with His Notes The Belief of Catholics The Text of One of His Most Famous Works the Creed in Slow Motion the text of his exposition of the Apostles' Creed, originally given as a series of sermons to the girls' school of which he was chaplain during World War II. Studies in the Literature of Sherlock Holmes. PDF at University of Minnesota Libraries.